Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. What a glorious morning this is. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of all the members and friends of HPC, welcome to our Easter service for Sunday, April the 4th, 2021. We will celebrate communion today, so be sure to have your bread and juice available. Let's begin with the birthdays. Now I have a confession to make. My birthday supplier didn't have two birthdays on my list for last week. So my supplier and I apologize. Doris Garvin's birthday was April the 1st, and Becky Valenta's was April the 3rd. Happy belated birthday to both of you, and we love you. And now the current birthdays. April the 5th, Amy Nicholson and Ann Neese, formerly known as the Kolar Twins. Ann and Amy, we are blessed to have you, and Mom and I love you. Happy 43rd. April the 6th, Catherine Shirk. April 7th, Tom Bush. April 9th, Kevin Bryce and Barb Sharp. Barb, I forgot my Honer harmonica at home. Next year, I'll play for you. And April the 10th, Chris Avergus. Happy birthday to all of you. Now, I have some joys to announce. Marla and I saw Joe Barker last week as she and her daughter delivered food to our house to be given away on Tuesday. It was so good to see Joe. What a blessing she is. Continuing on with the joys, the Scouts and their leader, Jason Marmon, collected 713.3 pounds of food for our food pantry. Thank you, Scouts, and Jason, too. Thanks to Doug Martin, Doug Lloyd, and Jason Coleman for picking up our monthly allotment of food from the Anne Arundel Food Bank. You guys are terrific. And one final joy, Lou and Marty Shell celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary on March the 30th. Happy anniversary to the Shells. Now here are the prayer concerns. Ivor Walker is back in the hospital. Pray for Ivor and Ayelet. Dorothy Ramsey's cousin, Bill Byers' grandson, is having brain surgery today, Easter Sunday. Also, Dorothy wants prayers for the Ramsey family. Her brother-in-law is in hospice in Texas with Parkinson's. Tina Baker's mother, Audrey Coble, has Alzheimer's and needs prayers. Ken Bryce's mother, Betty Bryce, is out of the hospital, but then to nursing care to deal with her congestive heart failure. Barbara Bryce needs prayers for her Parkinson's, which is getting worse. Joanne Viscosil passed away last week. She was Bob Glenn's dear cousin. Pray for the family. And Dana Poorman passed away suddenly last Thursday. Those of us may remember the Poorman family. Corey and Kevin are twins, and they have a brother, Todd. Please keep the Poorman family in your prayers. And pray for Sheila Ruth's family. They live in South Dakota, and they are being affected by the wildfires out there. Pray for them. And let's remember to pray, continue to pray for those affected by this virus. Friends, on this Easter morning, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Please stand with me as we are called into worship. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You may be seated. Friends, let's draw near to God, confessing our sins to the one who is loving enough and powerful enough to take them away. Let us pray silently, confessing how we have failed to love God, our neighbor, and ourselves, and then together, using the prayer printed on your sheet. Let us pray. Hear our silent prayers, O Lord, and hear us now as we pray together. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shatter the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. O Christ, in your resurrection, the heavens and the earth rejoice. Hallelujah. By your resurrection, you broke open the gates of hell and destroyed sin and death. Amen. Yeah. 
God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds and hearts that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles." unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is Mark's account of the resurrection. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, of all Sundays of the year, this Sunday, Easter, is the one that least requires a sermon. Sermon is the least necessary on this one because we all know why we're here. We all know the story. We all feel the joy of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Christ the Lord has risen today. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia, 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 amen. We know why we're here today. And you don't need me to tell you. 
So what I want to do this morning is to tell you about something that you might want to add to your Easter celebrations, to your Easter traditions and symbols for this highest of holy days. You know, we have the empty cross and the empty tomb. They're represented right here. They're first and foremost. They're front and center, the main symbols of Easter. And we have Easter lilies, and they're here as well. Thank you, Lou Shell and the worship committee. And we have Easter eggs and the Easter bunny, who, by the way, as busy as he was this time of year, still had time to stop by last week, last Saturday, a week ago, and show up for our Easter trail. We're very appreciative of him taking the time to do that. Thank you, Vicki Arnold and the Outreach Committee for coming up with that event for our children. And don't forget about jelly beans. What would Easter be without jelly beans? We have all these wonderful symbols and traditions around Easter. But what I'd like you to do is to consider adding one more. I want you to consider adding to all of these wonderful traditions a rainbow. And not just an ordinary rainbow, but a very, very special rainbow. And I'd like you to consider making this rainbow one of the very central symbols of Easter, maybe second only to the empty cross and empty tomb. You know, rainbows, rainbows have had a huge impact in our society through the years. There have been many, many groups and movements that have picked the rainbow up as their prominent main symbol to represent their groups. The gay pride movement comes to mind. Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Coalition. You all remember when he came up with that. It, it's, it's deep within our psyche and our culture. It's deep within our psyche. And it starts with, ch with childhood. I mean, it, with the Wizard of Oz and My Little Pony. I mean, it's just, when you think about it, rainbows are everywhere. And Easter begins to move in that direction with all the multicolored eggs and jelly beans that represent every color of the rainbow and more. You know, I remember, I remember back in 2012, I was serving a church in Bristol. It was right on the Tennessee-Virginia line. And I remember we got wind that the annual rainbow gathering was going to come to Cherokee National Forest, right next to South Holston Lake. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the, the rainbow gathering is this event. It, it started back in the 1970s, and it's grown through the decades. And, and basically, each summer, they pick an area, usually large acreage, public land, usually a forest, and, and all the hippies in the world come and they gather in the forest for a solid month to do whatever hippies do, okay? But they, they do this. It's a rainbow gathering. Seriously, there's like 15,000 hippies that come and just hang out in the woods. They commune with nature in the forest for a solid month. Now, once in a while, once in a while, things get a little out of hand, but anytime there's any trouble caused, when you research it and get to the bottom of it, it's always, it's always the townies or the add-ons because the hippies, they just come and hang out. They don't really do anything. And when they leave, it's absolutely amazing. It's like they were never there. All of which is pretty cool if you're into that kind of thing, I guess. But I digress, okay? <laughs> it was a big deal when they came. But I, I'm just trying to say this rainbow idea has become huge in our society. And, and in our culture, what they usually represent, kind of the common theme to the rainbow symbol, is this idea of harmony within diversity. Rainbows, they, they kind of represent that, that we can respect people's differences, but still work together despite those differences. And in fact, in a best case scenario, we can work together in such a way that celebrates those differences and makes it obvious that things work even better 
if you have diversity, that, that society is better off without being so homogenous. And that's a good thing. I'm all for harmony and diversity. But that's not what I want to tell you about this morning. Okay, that, that's not the rainbow idea that I want you to add to Easter. I want to add, I want to add a biblical rainbow to our celebration of Easter. And it's not the one you all are probably thinking about. Now I know, I know that we all know the story of Noah and the ark almost as well as we know the story of Easter. We know that God got fed up with the world and decided to drown it, all of it, except for Noah and his family. And so it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and Noah put animals in the ark and his family in the ark, and they floated it out, and finally the flood started to recede, and Noah landed the ark on the top of Mount Ararat. And first he sent out a raven to see if there was any dry land. Don't you all wonder whatever happened to the raven? He just disappears, never comes back. I, I guess that's another sermon. But then, then he sent out a dove, and he did that twice. And the second time, if you'll recall, the dove came back with an olive branch, which meant there was dry land and, and green growing things. And then after about a week, after the dove came back the second time, Noah opened up the ark, and they all got out and had church. That's exactly what they did. They had church right after that. And then God sent a rainbow sent a big rainbow in the sky and said, this is the sign of the covenant between me and the earth, between God and the earth. But like I said, that's not the rainbow I'm trying to tell you all about this morning, okay? There's another rainbow in the Bible. Some of you all may know this, but some of you may not. There's another rainbow in the Bible, and as important as Noah's rainbow is, I believe this one is even more important. If you go all the way to the other end of the Bible, if you go from Genesis where Noah's rainbow is told about, if you go all the way to the end, to the book of Revelation, you'll find another rainbow. And that's the rainbow I'm suggesting that we add to our Easter traditions, our Easter symbols. Let me just read you about it. This is from Revelation chapter 4. It's John's telling us what he sees in his vision. Okay? John says, After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looked like jasper and carnelian. And here's, here's what I want you to pay attention to. And around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. A rainbow that looks like an emerald. An emerald rainbow. Sounds like something out of the Wizard of Oz, doesn't it? But if you'll recall, L. Frank Baum, he, he didn't use an emerald rainbow. He had an emerald city, but he used a regular rainbow. In fact, I did a little Google search about emerald rainbows in literature, and the only thing that I could come up with that wasn't biblical was a book by Lynette Chambers and Janice Lee called The Emerald Rainbow. And when I looked at that book a little bit, I discovered, lo and behold, on the dedication page, what do you think they had quoted? the exact same scripture from Revelation that I just read to you. So as far as I can tell, this idea of an emerald rainbow is completely unique to John's vision in the book of Revelation. And as interesting as that is, it's not why I think we should include that emerald rainbow in our Easter traditions. What's important is understanding what the two rainbows represent. And Noah's rainbow, the one that we see every time it rains and the sun comes out, that's the rainbow of the old covenant. In fact, it's the oldest covenant that God made with the earth. And it is a covenant that still stands 
It's unbroken to this very day because, thank God, that covenant is not dependent on us. It's dependent only on God and God keeping his promise. You see, every covenant that God makes with us, with people that requires us to do something on our half to maintain that covenant, every time he, every time he makes a covenant with we humans like he made with the Israelites, we break it. Every single time. We mess it up. And then God has to start all over again. But God made that rainbow covenant back in Noah's time with the whole earth. And it was just based on his promise. His will. And he will not break it. Never, ever. But here's the difference between the two rainbows. And this is important. The original rainbow covenant from Noah's time is a covenant of death. Think about it. That covenant is about God not drowning the world again, never destroying the world, or if he does, he won't use water. That covenant is about death. But the covenant of the emerald rainbow is a covenant of life, eternal life, in fact. You see, the emerald rainbow doesn't appear over the earth like Noah's rainbow. It's around a throne. And whose throne is it? Who is sitting on that throne? God, of course. It is the throne of the triune God surrounded by an emerald rainbow. And the covenant it represents is the new covenant. The covenant that God made with Christ. The covenant that is sealed with the blood of Christ, shed for the forgiveness of sins. It's a sign of the new covenant between God and Christ and all of us who are saved through the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. And it is not dependent on us, thank God, any more than that first rainbow covenant was that keeps God from drowning the earth again, as tempting as that must be often enough. This covenant, the new covenant for eternal life, is for each of us who believe in Jesus Christ, who believe in Easter. That's why I think we should add it to our Easter symbols. It's a sign of life. It's green. The color green is the color of new life. And in all its emerald brilliancy, this is important too. It's a sign not of diversity like we use the rainbow of Noah's time. It's a sign of unity, of unity. As wonderful as diversity and variety is on this earth, the pinnacle of spirituality is unity. The goal of Christianity is unity. Unity through Christ, unity by Christ, Unity in Christ. So this emerald rainbow, this emerald rainbow that I hope you will add to your Easter symbols from this day on, it's a sign of the true gift of Easter. It's a sign of our sharing in loving unity through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in affirming our faith by the reciting of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
rejoice and praise Him. Alleluia. For our Redeemer burst from the tomb, even from death dispelling its gloom. Let us sing praise to Him with endless joy. Death's fearful sin He has come to destroy. Our sins forgiving, Alleluia. Jesus is living, Alleluia. For three long days the grave did its worst, until its strength by God was dispersed. He who gives life did death undergo, and in its conquest his might did show. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sins forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. The angel said to them, do not fear. You look for Jesus, who is not here. See for yourselves, the tomb is all bare. Only the grave are lying there. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sins forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will. 
be filled. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. Your love remained steadfast. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression, brought us through the sea to freedom, and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice in the prophets, and in the word made flesh, you lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live, and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every time and place. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and met with violence and death. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and at his command the gates of hell were opened. The one who was dead now lives. The one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation. The Lamb is upon the throne. The one ascended on high is with us always, as he promised. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord, on the night of his arrest, took bread and after giving thanks to his heavenly Father, he broke it, saying to his disciples, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. For every time we eat of this loaf and drink of this cup, we do proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. 
until he comes to preside at this table himself. Let us pray. Nourished at this table, O God, may we know Christ's redemptive love and live a new life in Him. Help us who recognize our Lord in the breaking of bread to see and serve Him in all whose lives are broken. Give us who are fed at His hand grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. Christ the Lord has risen today. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. Amen.